I felt like the Steelers looked good, and I, I think the mm -hmm. Steelers. I, I'm, I'm cheering for the Steelers, and I don't often say that, but I do like what what they've done this offseason. I like the idea of them trying to move to an environment that that's so much less based on conflict and 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 and. Uh, Dealing with all Disorder. kinds of distractions. I, I like the move that they're making there. I think that, you know, this is a team that's gone through tremendous adversity this this training camp with, with losing their wide receivers coach. And, and um, I, I'm hopeful that this experiment works. And I think that with Ben Roethlisberger, all of those wide receivers have a chance to become special. And you've got guys like Dante Moncrief. Who could make a jump? You've got Dante Johnson. It's uh, James, James Washington, Washington has had a really nice preseason. I think mm -hmm. he's got 10 or 11 catches. So, so they're hoping that that's going to continue, uh, continue to improve. So they're they're going to be in the mix. And you saw some really positive things defensively as well. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, especially early. But I, I think that this is going to be a team that has a chance to go a long way. I'm glad you mentioned James Washington. Big Ben did an interview before the game, well, it aired before the game last night, where he talked about his relationship with Antonio Brown. And he mentioned, in that same time I criticized A.B., I criticized James Washington, and he called me to thank me for it. And James, you know, said it made him better. And we have now seen whether that's true or not. We have seen the James Washington in the preseason the Steelers hoped they were getting last year because – We've talked about how many receivers the Steelers have developed, whether they were high draft picks or not, from Heinz Ward to Emmanuel Sanders to Mike Wallace to Santonio Holmes to Antonio Brown. A lot of those guys overlapped, it meaning it's not often for Big Ben. He's only had one excellent target to look at. And even A.B. the last, last year, he had Juju alongside him. Can James Washington be that secondary option? Because Juju, to me, is a clear, and he could be a great receiver, but he's still a clear downgrade from Antonio Brown. This, this Steelers team is going to be an excellent test case on, is it more with less if the less is easier? If the less is less noisy, even if it's less talented. And I know, I think that's one of the reasons you're saying you're rooting for them because you like the the sum is greater than the individual parts. You like that philosophy, that more so than give me as much talent as possible, we'll figure it out. And the Steelers, whether they meant to or not, the last few years had been, we'll figure it out. We've got a star running back, a star wide receiver, star quarterback. Now they just have the star quarterback and a potential star wide receiver who, at least at the time being, seems to be far less maintenance than the previous wide receiver they had. But I do think they're going to need one of those secondary receiving threats to step up. I think James Washington's the most likely of them and the one that they might be leaning on the most. Um, number one for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, we know they went through the tragic death, sudden death, of Coach Drake, their wide receiver coach. Now, with all these young wide receivers, that's something I want to watch. Last year, you and I talked about it. Vikings lost. Coach Pirano, before the season started, they never recovered, and that was their weakest unit. A lot of pressure on the Pittsburgh wide receivers. Um, 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 they're very fortunate. Mike Tomlin goes out and, and hires Ray Sherman. Ray Sherman used to coach me in Minnesota. He was coordinator there. He was quarterback coach there. He's coached wide receivers. He coached Jerry Rice. He coached T.O., coached Randy Moss, coached myself, and a bunch of others. So they're very, very fortunate to bring him up. As far as the wide receivers, Juju Smith-Schuster's got to show that he can play outside the numbers. They have too many slot receivers, so Juju's got to go outside. Last year in the slot, there's only three receivers that played more slot than him. So as you can see from the tape in the preseason, we're going to try to run the ball. They look very good running the ball. They got a good offensive line. But if you blitz Ben Roethlisberger, you have a six-man rush, seven-man rush, he's going to carve you apart. They move Juju outside. They run a little stack route in the middle. Ben Roethlisberger eyeballs the safety and fires a strike in the back of the end zone. That's why Ben is one of the best. I'm excited to see the Pittsburgh Steelers. I do, I do know this. It's not I'm guessing. In pro sports, it's about units. It's about team. And you can be better as a team with less talent. It's hard to win championships with no talent, but in team sports, yes, the Pittsburgh Steelers is possible without A.B. being there. Can they be better? Absolutely, and I think we're going to see it. How big of a drop-off is it, though, without Lev Bell and A.B. there? How big of a drop-off is it if James Conner and Juju Smith-Schuster are your main main targets, main guys going in? Well, I don't, I don't think the Le'Veon Bell factor is, is a factor at all. They went through the whole season last year mm -hmm. without having him, so they're used to that. 
And then with Antonio Brown. But you're confident in James Conner as a number one. I, he could be their featured I, back. I am, and, and I'm confident in, in, in their backfield in general because you're going to get, because of Ben Roethlisberger and because of, of, of how effective he is, you're going to get more seven-man boxes. And, and that's going to provide opportunities for running backs that, that other quarterbacks can't create based off of who they are. Now, to Chris's point earlier, talking about the running game, if they run the ball more yep. and can and now force teams into eight-man boxes, that's going to help the passing game. And that's always been Pittsburgh's brand. Be interesting to see whether they, they go back to that brand. Coach is right. Last time they were a top-10 running team, 2010, that was their last Super Bowl appearance. So a lot of that will be tied to the running game. But if you look at... Connors and Jalen Samuels their overall productivity in 2019 was as good and better than L Bell was in 2017 touchdowns yards everything it stack up so they've replaced the running part how do you replace 1500 yards right. double digit touchdowns that's hard to do and, and with Jalen Jalen and, and, and Connor are both averaging over six yards of carry in the preseason now granted it's the preseason but that's a positive thing but the, the receiving core they're going to have a chance to, to, to absorb those, those receptions. And ideally, by everybody being on the same page, by having some continuity, this offense should work more effectively. There's nothing more disruptive than being on the sideline and having your star receiver come in and say, hey, I'm open, I'm open, throw me the ball, I'm open, I'm open. You look at the cards, and the guy's double teamed. It's like, you're not open. Yeah. And then the guy says, well, I can get open. <laughs> that's like, all right, that, that's great. Can we, can we move on and look at what's really happening as opposed to what's happening in your mind? And you still like the Steelers to win the division this year? Uh, yeah, I'm a big Steelers fan. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.